<laughs> our viewers at home as yeah. well. We want to thank them for coming along with us and joining us for day number two of the World Championship. It is all Explorer all day. No Esper mid-range mirrors to be seen <laughs> as we are going to try and find our top four today. The players are ready to rock and roll. And wow, that is a heckin' nice start here for Junior yeah. Wellman. Four lands, Shark Typhoon, Transmogrify, and the briefcase. So yeah. let's just, you know, Make some mana and uh, turn three transmogrify potentially. Exactly. The briefcase is one of the cards, just like careful cultivation, mm -hmm. that allows for that turn three transmogrify. You're able to use the token itself to generate mana, or in this case, the curious briefcase to generate mana and then target it with transmogrify. And I mean, without some kind of big draw or some way to disrupt that, that's going to be too fast uh, for Nathan. All right, well, Kitty Cat on the battlefield here for Nathan Stuer. We'll get his hand up as soon as you possibly can. But at the moment, just seeing what I see and knowing that there is a 1-1 one -one coming out with that Courier's Briefcase next turn, yep. you're going to be feeling pretty good here if you're Julian. Exactly. And, I mean, there is plenty of ways to disrupt this. You know, Nathan could be going Claim the Firstborn plus Witch's Oven to deal with this 1-1 one -one mm -hmm. to kind of stop that combination. There's still Fatal Pushes. But now, Nathan's kind of in that spot where you really don't want to be with these Rakdos Sacrifice decks where your mana has to be left open mm. to prevent this really powerful thing like Transmogrify because then Julian just has the option of being like, okay, if you're going to leave up mana, you know what, I'm just going to do something else. And there is Claim the Firstborn, like you mentioned, so an ideal follow-up here would be the Witch's Oven, Cauldron Familiar, and the 1-1. One -one. Gonna chip in here for a couple points of damage. Julian is hoping this comes back to him. I bet a Village Rites could be an option here too, but yeah, there's is. the Oven. Yeah, Village Rites. Excellent way to deal with these stolen goods. <laughs> but we will see Witch's Oven and some food generation happening here. Kitty Cat loves a good old midday snack. So let's feed him. Yep, this is what this Rakdos Sacrifice deck is all about, is putting green-white humans into mm -hmm. the Witch's Oven. And the <laughs> now, oh, yeah. of course, we are normally <laughs> putting the Cauldron <laughs> Familiar in it and then bringing it back. Well, in this case, it's definitely going to be keep those tokens off Julian's battlefield. Exactly. And does have a backup token here in the form of Shark Typhoon. Can just make a little itty-bitty baby shark on the end step here and force Nathan to then have the instant speed removal for it. Yep, and the one thing that's really nice about this Teamer Transmogrify list is it kind of comes out of nowhere. You have a lot of instant speed ways to make tokens. Mm -hmm. So Nathan doesn't have any idea of like, okay, Julian just doesn't have anything this turn, or if you have one of your eight ways to make a token <laughs> and then go into Transmogrify, or even Luca this next turn with the briefcase. Yeah, certainly don't want to be caught unawares here if you are Nathan Stoyer because it's incredibly difficult in game number one, especially to deal with a titan of industry. You know, just being able to murder <laughs> anything on the battlefield, make a bunch mm -hmm. of big creatures, gain life. I mean, it does it all. It really does. Yeah, absolutely. The one thing that these transmogrify decks usually do play, which is a lot better against these Rakdos sacrifice strategies, is Fires of Invention. Mm -hmm. That is the one card that Julian, uh, Simon Gertzen, and the rest of the company decided not to play because they really wanted to prioritize prioritize interacting on your opponent's yeah. turn to be able to kill cards like Grease Fang, you know, like some of these Mono Blue Spirits mm -hmm. decks that we're going to see. And uh, But that does sacrifice in matchups like this, because Fires of Invention, one of the best cards against Rakdos strategies. Here we're going to see a Shark Typhoon and a little shark, just a 1-1. One -one. Now the question is, does Nathan Stoyer have the Fatal Push to deal with it before the turn passes back to Julian Wellman, who has Transmogrify? Okay, let's see if he can take care of this before this is cost. Yeah, and before before the Azekas Chariot was top decked, it was going to be a situation of like, well, there's nothing else Julian can do this turn, mm -hmm. so you kind of have to go for it. But now with Azekas Chariot, you actually have a pretty good plan B that kind of roadblocks Nathan's battlefield yeah. already. So I wouldn't be surprised if we do just see that cast. And another thing that we might see is Azika's Chariot get crewed and the, the vehicle itself get transmogrified because then it can't get fatal pushed unless you do That's have true. a treasure, which we do see on Nathan's yeah. side, but that could come up in later situations. Yeah, there are ways to uh, certainly get things off the battlefield here if you're Nathan Stoyer, just to activate that revolt trigger. But now with tokens of plenty and we're seeing Julian not rush it, he's quite happy yeah. just to, you know, make as many options as he possibly can. So. And you mentioned again, instant speed interaction is going to be key here, as well as this friend. This yep. friend likes to ping down little itty bitty. It's 
Yeah, you know, exactly. with one, tu one toughness. And there is kind of the head shake from Julian because <laughs> if, you know, we, we don't have uh, Nathan's hand exactly right now, but if we did find out that Nathan did not have a fatal push mm -hmm. and Julian decided to not go for it because he was worried about fatal push. Well, now Mayhem Devil alone with sacking these treasures, with sacking these foods, with bringing back Cauldron Familiar, yeah. it can already ping down whatever target um, yeah. is brought here. I mean, it's, it's going to be, you know, just sacrifice city over here for Nathan Stoyer, yeah. Blood Tithe Harvester, sacrificing himself to deal with one of the cats. And between the cat, the oven, the food getting sacrificed, these tokens are all but dead. They truly are. And now it comes down to the point where Azika's chariot almost doesn't want to be uh, crewed mm. really at all because we are seeing that beautiful glowing bird serpent in the bottom right hand corner. This is an 80 card deck from <laughs> Julian. So if you leave Azika's chariot on the battlefield and you never crew it, it's not going to die yeah. outside of one or two copies of a braid in Nathan 75. And at least you can restock those cats, you know, in a couple turns after you buy it from the companion zone. So how does the game plan then shift for Julian? Because I don't foresee him casting Transmogrify and getting away with it anytime soon, because even yeah. if Nathan is tapped out, he has what he needs on the battlefield to be able to deal with this, the tokens. Yep. 100 agree. It really shifts now. Fable the Mirror Breaker being an excellent draw, at looting away a couple of these lands. Mm -hmm. But I think we are going to see the take two damage from one of these duels, put Yorian into hand, and have that be the main game plan for next okay. turn. Because with Azika's Chariot and Fable, you're able yeah. to create six power with three two twos and still have Azika's Chariot um, and kind of try to win that game plan mm -hmm. um, and then hope to deal with Mayhem Devil at some point and then Transmogrify. It, it looks like the whole Titan of Industry plan is going to be on the back burner for oh, a couple yeah. of turns. I think we might see a hard cost uh, Titan, if anything. <laughs> and then on the other side of things, we've got Nathan Stoyer, who we don't know his hand, but we know with the game plan. We know yeah. it's now, okay, I'm controlling the battlefield. When does his attention go towards face? You know, and that's the thing with these Rakdos sacrifice decks is the attention usually goes to the creature until mm -hmm. all of a sudden you kind of look up and you're like, oh, wow, <laughs> Julian's at nine, you know, from all these yeah. uh, Cauldron Familiar triggers. And then you really get to change your focus. It's really not going to be a change focus type of thing until Nathan can see like, OK, end step. I can bring back Cauldron Familiar and put it in the oven enough times to ping you and then untap, do the same and, yeah. and win that turn. Um, but otherwise, it's just going to be priority number one, make sure that uh, no creatures are generated in a large fashion from Julian. So far, the creature count is kept under control here by Nathan Stoyer and the Rakdos Sacrifice. We do have, like you mentioned, the Fable of the Mirror Breaker going off Chapter 2 next turn for Julian Wellman. But now we're going to see a Blood Token sacrificed, looting away an unwanted card. Cauldron Familiar will come back, dealing that second point of damage courtesy of the Mayhem Devil and Gain and Drain. Let's go. Yep, and Julian did have that, uh, you know, that thought while playing the Breeding Pool to take two, <laughs> put Yorian into hand, realize, kind of crunch the numbers that, you know, just a Yorian alone next turn was not going to be enough. He was probably going to die. So uh, decides that, all right, Fable the Mirror Breaker has to find me something good. Yeah. I need Titan. I need to gain some life. I need to maybe destroy that oven. Yeah. Otherwise, Julian uh, isn't going to win this game. I mean, what ways do we even have to deal with this Mayhem Devil from the Transmogrify list? We've got Fire Prophecy. That would be ideal. Granted, whatever is targeted is just going to get put in the oven and cooked. Mm -hmm. There's Voltage Surge as well um, that you could sacrifice some things. The Acroan War to take, one a Braid. And then, of course, if you're feeling real lucky, mm -hmm. you can Transmogrify it and hope they don't hit another one. But <laughs> <laughs> I wouldn't recommend that one. That's true. Yeah, that's that's <laughs> super risky. Though. It's kind of like causing a Chaos Warp. It's just like, all right, I need this to go away. Please don't hit anything yeah. good. <laughs> That card is so aptly named. It is chaos. Oh, when you... <laughs> I love it. Too much fun. So big things here for our players. And you see Nathan very calm, cool, but he is just mm -hmm. running the numbers here. You know, a lot of math going through his head. Both both players extremely good at math. Julian Wellman being a math degree student at MIT. <laughs> Another witch's oven follow up here from Nathan Stoyer. So. Here we might see the acceleration towards please die. Yeah, absolutely. And running the numbers, Nathan's just saying, can I win right mm -hmm. now? With Fable being cast, I would assume not, because otherwise, you know, you could make these foods, maybe sacrifice them since yeah. you have that extra food available. 
Um, but it's definitely getting close. Yeah, for sure. So it's not not near, not exactly dead, but uh, we're still going to get going here. We're going to start the process and say to Julian, right, you have one turn essentially, or I'm going to get you next one. And maybe that was a little bit of a test sacrifice. Be like, okay, do you have a braid? <laughs> you know, do you have a braid for Mayhem Devil? And if not, maybe it's open here because the sack goes to eight, the cat goes to seven, sack goes to six, cat goes to five. Okay, so yeah, it is a little short, but it is close. Oh yeah. It, it, yeah, essentially, this is the turn. Julie needs to find a Titan of Industry, okay. and there it is. Three, four, five, mm. six, seven. So you can cast Titan, gain five, maybe blow up an oven. But at this point, is it enough? I mean, it's something. Yeah, you, you have to try and scrap for every little bit you can in yeah. these matchups. Here comes Titan of Industry. The big boy himself, unfortunately, the sacrificing of the briefcase, though, does ding him for one more point of damage, so... Let's yeah, see if this is enough. Be, this is gonna be really close. I think it looks like Nathan has this, but man, these uh, Cat Oven Mayhem Devil triggers mm -hmm. are just... They get they get out of control oh, so quickly. They're so rough. I mean, five life, you think, yeah, that's, that's pretty good. Yeah, maybe for a control player. Yeah. In this situation, <laughs> though. Yeah. Unfortunately, not so much. And so far, I want to bring some attention back to that turn before Mayhem Devil was on the battlefield. Mm -hmm. We see that one card with Nathan Stoyer's hand, and if that is not Fatal Push, Julian could have completely, mm. you know, lost the game with that small decision to play Azekas Chariot instead yeah. of going for Transmogrify. And I mean, it makes sense. If Julian goes for Transmogrify there, and it is Fatal Push, the game's over. Yeah. You know, there's, there's no play to it like we had here, but... But on the flip side, was there really too much, you know, of a disadvantage going for it then and there? Because then Fatal Push is out the way, you follow up then with the cat oven. Or excuse me, with the uh, with the cat car. Yeah, exactly. And I think the whole, uh, you know, the whole theory was that when Mayhem Devil wasn't on the battlefield, maybe Azika's Chariot was going to actually start running away with the game on its own. Yeah. You know, just start copying shamans or copying cats. Uh, and then you can kind of, you know, win with your plan B. Sure. And then as the your opponent's distracted trying to deal with your plan B, <laughs> then you hit him with the plan A of transmogrifying into this Titan of Industry. Yeah. But it would have been close. I agree with you. Yeah. Well, here we go. Targeting an oven. Cauldron Familiar is going to come back, do Cauldron Familiar things, so gaining life, destroying one of these witches' ovens. But Julian Wellman is going to go incredibly low here as we are going to see Titan of Industry take care of one of these ovens. And not only on top of all the pings from Mayhem Devil and the drains from Cauldron Familiar, mm -hmm. there is just a shaman that can connect as well. So we can put Julian at a virtual eight with just attacking with Mayhem Devil and Shaman. You block mm -hmm. the Mayhem Devil. And then if you do all your sack triggers, you know, yeah, uh, beforehand, response. yep, then, uh, you know, this should probably be enough. Wait, we'll see if we see two cards get discarded. If you have Fatal Push in hand here, you probably yeah, discard gonna... it looking for yeah. another Mayhem Devil. Well, let's see if Stora does discard two cards here to look a little deeper into the library. He's thinking hard about it, so something, there's something good in hand. And don't forget there's also the uh, Den of the Bugbear hanging yeah. out. One extra land, that's two extra attackers. Yeah, and I bet, I think you're exactly right. I think he has land five in hand. It's mm -hmm. like, is Den just lethal on its own? There goes a Fable. Fable, and another card, and a big okay. head shake from Nathan. We don't have to see the hand to know that, that this game is probably over here. Yep, Mayhem Devil's gonna get pinging, and the Kitty Cat can come back. He can sacrifice both food tokens here in response to the first sack trigger. Isn't gonna do that, though. So, something tells me he has what he needs. Or he could just eat it, you know. Yeah. Oh, deadly dispute. There we go. Another sacrifice effect. Another ding. Yep. Two more cards. The cat can come back. There's two more damage. One extra with the life gain, and then just two attackers in. Julian yep. can't do anything here. Absolutely. This is especially with Julian on the play. This is not really what I expected for mm. game one. And you know, game one is definitely the game that Julian really, really, really <laughs> wanted to win. <laughs> and uh, yeah, it looks like didn't even need to go to combat. No. How do all these shamans help yeah. back? Still had all this. <laughs> All right, so pretty straightforward there for Nathan Stoyer. Like you said, if if Julian had mm -hmm. gone for it, perhaps this would have been an entirely yeah. different matchup. But 
you know, still then the onus would be on Julian to deal with that mayhem devil who yes. just ran away with the game. It really did, yeah. Titan of Industry had to really be played every single turn yeah. to keep up with mayhem devil itself. And as we know with this deck, that's not really possible. I do want to remind everyone that these players already played in standard where Julian Wellman did take it down. So this is a bit of a mm -hmm. rematch where this was Nathan's only loss. And winner of this moving to 8-1 and one, might only need one more round to make it to Sunday. What, what a great start That's of the day it good. would be if you take this down. That's going to feel so good for these young guns of the tournament, the Zoomers, the as Zoomers, we affectionately yeah. call them. We're boomers too, right? I don't know. I think so. I think we're halfway in between. We're halfway? Okay, yeah. okay, okay. I think, gotcha. I think Marshall is like, you know, granddaddy boomer. <laughs> <laughs> don't tell him I said that. He probably heard that, though. So if I don't come back, uh, you know what? <laughs> oh, OK, that's great. That's He's certainly great. the most senior of the team. I'll put it that way. But I don't, I don't know what we class ourselves as. So I like it. Anyway, I like it. I do love, however, though, I, I will just put this out there. This titan of industry. Yes. That's a big boy, right? That's a mythic. Very large. It's getting its, I don't know, balustrades handed to it by an uncommon little mayhem devil. Yes. And you know how happy that makes me? <laughs> that really does. I th you're not biased at all to loving no. cat oven. No, no. Okay, okay. Kitty cat was my preview card. You boasted about yours yesterday. Today Ooh, I get to boast about mine. That is a Hold good one. There. That is a good one. So I do want to bring some attention while though, now that we're talking about mm -hmm. Titan of Industry. There's some really cool combos here where if you can ever turn this card into a copy with Reflection of Kiki Jiki, mm -hmm. then it becomes a token. You oh, get that trigger. And gross. then if you attack with the Zika's Chariot, you can you then can clone them. it as well. So those are some of the over-the-top ridiculous lines that we may see uh, later on here. Cauldron familiar on the battlefield. So another pretty good start here for Nathan yeah. Stoyer, and I bet Julian hates to see that. Does have a couple ways to deal with it this time, though. Actually, mm -hmm. four. Uh, <laughs> yeah. if, if he really wants that cat dead, it's going to die. Yeah. But most importantly, it is not, none of them are exile effects, yeah. no anger, anything like that. And this is what is really powerful and versatile about this team or transmogrify deck is, mm -hmm. look at all this interaction. If this was a fires deck, which admittedly is better with Yorian, you yeah. know, you get to do some insane things. Fire and Yorian is quite the combination. Mm -hmm. But being able to slow this game down and say, all right, I just got obliterated by Mayhem <laughs> Devil. I need to answer it. This deck can do that. It sure can. Tenacious underdog, so a lovely one-two punch here from Nathan Stoyer. That's going to hit the battlefield, too. And we're going to see Omen of the Sea in response <laughs> on the end step here for Julian Wellman. He's going to look for some more goodies. Doesn't like Omen of the Sea or Steam Vents. And Nathan Stoyer seems quite happy that there's two cards moving to the bottom. And that is a little spicy Ooh. one of of Tenacious Underdog in the sideboard of this Rakdos deck. So we saw Jeez. Julian give the head nod and be like, I didn't expect that one yeah. coming in. Oh, hi, buddy. What's up? <laughs> Careful Cultivation, the card you mentioned and Monty drew attention to as well, able to create that token and accelerate the game plan here for Julian Wellman, but still no Transmogrify or Luca Copacop. Outcast in hand. Mm -hmm. Yep, absolutely. And we won't really be seeing that careful cultivation actually cast. It is definitely uh -uh. a channel for one colorless and a green discarded to create that uh, uh, human creature yep. that adds some mana. There you see Voltage Surge, not sacrificing an artifact. Dealing with the underdog, so into the graveyard it goes. But let's be honest, just like the kitty cat, it likes hanging out there. <laughs> Yeah, it, it lives in the yeah. graveyard. It lives its best life in the graveyard, as yeah. we saw a lot in all these Esper mid-range matchups. This is actually what Julian this really great, wanted yeah. here. You know, so much removal. Doesn't even, oh, I guess we did go to end step. I was like, we even did this in main phase. Got to get this Mayhem Devil dead immediately. <laughs> oh, goodness. Now the question is, do we want to put something back into the library? It looks like we do, just to get yep. a little deeper in. Finds a Shivan Reef off the top of the library. Another careful cultivation. But importantly, two answers to any additional Mayhem yeah. Devils that may be in Stora's hand. Absolutely. And bringing some attention to Fire Prophecy here, mm -hmm. there is usually other better options. Oh, yeah. Like, let's say Scorching Dragon Fire would have been really good for Cold and Familiar. Mm -hmm. But the one very good application of Fire Prophecy is if you draw too many Titan of Industry, yeah. you can't transmogrify for anything because yeah. that's your only target. So that ends up being quite a, a good combo yeah. in this deck. Yeah, it's an excellent way just to get the target back into the library. Exactly. And it, it clearly deals with the Mayhem Devil. You know, there's no sacrifice effects out currently. There was no mana untapped. This turn could be different, so let's see how we follow up here. It's just going to be Tenacious oh. Underdog blitzed out. 
Paying the two life and uh, going to get a card off of the sacrifice effect in the end step. Yeah, interesting. You saw Julian kind of head shake there, a little bit of emotion mm -hmm. in the webcam. And that's either, well, that is the best you got, or, uh-oh, I'm kind of afraid if you just do this over and over, you know? Yeah. <laughs> I couldn't really decipher exactly what look is. But, you know, you really don't want to use a removal spell on the Tenacious Underdog because you do get that ability to draw a card yeah. no matter what if it dies. Yeah, so now it's just a case of, all right, do I want to preserve my life total? Because between the two players, Nathan has far more agency to use the life total's resource, whereas yes. Julian has to preserve it, knowing that there could be a mayhem Ooh, devil in the draw. wings. Oh, big draw. The Essica's Cadillac chariot. off the top. Kitty car cometh, takes the three. Tenacious underdog goes die die. Careful cultivation will be channeled. We'll get that one one. Oh, Nathan's nodding, thinking, yep, it's time for oh. Luca, but it's not. It's not. It's oh. truly not. So it's not as bad as it could be in this scenario. And I mm -hmm. think as the more time passes, the more Nathan knows, okay, maybe it's not that bad. Yeah. Azika's Chariot is still going to be excellent, though. Yeah, it's it's second prize, you know, consolation prize to a degree. Azika's Chariot's going to hit the battlefield here, create a couple of extra tokens. Now let's see what Nathan thinks about that. So look at this. This is pretty interesting. This mm -hmm. is a straight bluff with that one steam vent open. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, you could have got a damage in. This is just saying, I have spell pierce. I have vaulted <laughs> surge. I have these things that you could do yep. to prevent uh, you know, some really powerful spell, I guess. Yep. Usually, Julian's deck wins by miles, not inches, though. So oh, you yeah. know, the one extra damage usually not that important. Yep. Feast or famine. It's just going to be. The Cauldron Familiar, though, on the battlefield here for Nathan Stoyer, but uh, Julian's got two far bigger, far fluffier cats. Uh, <laughs> all that extra hair certainly adds yeah. to the power and toughness here for these cats. And again, no transmogrify effects, no yeah. Luca to speak of. So now he's kind of forced into the plan B that we spoke about. He doesn't even have the option of plan A. But the plan B is good right now yeah. because the plan A of Nathan Stoyer <laughs> of Cat Oven Mayhem Devil That's going is nowhere. not really happening right no. now. Julian was able to break this up. And normally we would see this Ezekiel Ch Ezekiel's Chariot be held back mm. and, you know, tried to be saved a little bit so that you could buy Yorian from the companion zone, then play yeah. it, flash everything out, and get those cats again. But when you have another one in hand, this is plenty fine to just put it in danger and maybe get the max value out of it, which is yeah. copy that one one, uh, that kind of Llanowar elf to the mm -hmm. left, or copy one of the cats. Yeah, I mean, it, it is dangerous either way. Yeah, okay. we could see deadly dispute here, get the cat off the battlefield, and then a, and then fatal, a fatal push, push revolt. Yep. There's also the abrade, possibly. Oh. That, that was a bit of an odd, I think, uh, maybe auto-tap there where both black sources got tapped. So maybe one unnecessary damage. We saw Julian kind of mm. hone over that, <laughs> kind of see what the players are thinking with their mouses. Uh -huh. Mice? Mice. Yeah, yeah. Mouses. <laughs> <Boy. laughs> the Next. first mistake I've ever made on a Next broadcast. you're going to call yeah. the plural of moose meese. That's it, right? No. Oh, of course, of course. Goodness me, Corey. <laughs> Where did you go to school? <laughs> anyway. Attackers swinging on in Essica's chariot. What does Stoyer have? He has to have a removal spell, right? Or was he digging for one, potentially? So, yeah, here's Otherwise, the... Why would the kitty cat jump out the way? Exactly. If you have a fatal push, you know, sometimes we see the popular play pattern of Azika's chariot attack, whatever you target, kill that target. Yeah. But all the removal spell that could be cast from Nathan right now could also just kill the chariot. Mm -hmm. So unless he has some sick read that Julian has another chariot in hand, then it, it would make sense that Nathan just doesn't have any removal. Okay. Well, token time. What are we going to copy? Let's accelerate or let's just make a couple extra 2-2 bodies Ooh. that... Uh, what are you thinking? Yeah, so I'm thinking that this could be Culligan's Command. Uh, oh. There's two of those in the sideboard where you would want to wait for the target because uh -huh. then you get the target and the chariot. Ah. No, it, okay. it was the fatal Just push. The fatal push. Not going after the cat car. Yeah, you see Julian with the head shake there. I feel you. I, I'm, I'm I am curious that one about as well. that. Yeah, so it's going to take the four. The cat card remains unless there's another removal spell. Hmm. So All now. Right. Yeah, it's now, do we want to buy Yorian? Mm, look at Nathan, he's not happy about that, so. Yeah. So far from what we've seen from Nathan's play pattern is it's definitely not the A plus draw. No. You know, the, the Deadly Dispute could have definitely unlocked a lot of uh, power here. 
But we'll see. Goes to 11 so that we can have a braid open. Mm -hmm. Bringing Yorion to hand. Leaving up that braid in case of mayhem devil shenanigans. But so far, things looking a lot better for Julian Wellman in this game. We have a duress now, which is going to hurt a tiny bit. A braid can't really yeah. do anything except blow up that treasure if he's feeling spiteful. But now it's choice. What do I take here? And this might give us an indication of what's in Story's hand. Takes the removal spell. Now, could this be clearing the way for Mayhem Devil? Yeah, that would make a lot of sense to me. I mean, there is already a Zika's Chariot, so mm. taking that one isn't that great when you already have one in mm -hmm. play. So it could still mean quite a few different things. But yeah, Nathan definitely has to play something of value here. And if we if we see that old Gigantha be put mm. to hand, you know this <laughs> hand is pretty weak. But Den of the Bugbear is also an option. For sure. We're going to see Tenacious Underdog down to 11 goes Stoyer. There's wow. a Witch's Oven, so now the Sacrifice game plan is unlocked. Tenacious yeah. Underdog's going to get him for three. Julian's down to seven, so not out of the woods by any means. And a though, virtual six. Yeah. Yeah. And he just gave a good head nod. So now we do have a nice little play mm -hmm. of being able to attack with Azika's Chariot, make a copy of a cat. Um, you know, probably you get a no damage because it blocks, which is unfortunate. But then you can at least Yorian Blink Chariot plus Omen, get some cards. All of a sudden, you have a bazillion power on yeah. battlefield. But that's only good against that's only good against attacking. Yeah. And this Rakdos deck is very good at winning the game through other means oh, of yeah. just sacrificing. So if we see Mayhem Devil and one more Witch's Oven. We're done here. That is very true indeed. Nathan Stoyer certainly has outs. He's wincing, though, so I'm guessing he doesn't have what he needs in hand right now. So has to hope that the top of the library plays nice. Den of the Bugbear, don't forget about that. Still two extra bodies if he does need to swing. But yeah. with what you've mentioned, bouncing the Chariot and the Omen of the Sea, there's going to be three creatures on board here. So. Yeah, there's, highly unlikely we're going to see that. There's going to be three untapped cats. Mm -hmm. There's going to be a chariot untapped, and there's going to be the Yorian itself yep. untapped. So there's going to be the access four. of four blockers, even through like one removal spell. If you were to kill Yorian, you could use that to crew the mm -hmm. chariot and block. So attacking is going to be pretty tr tricky. The old tenacious underdog plan is probably done for now, yeah. but it did some work. Yeah, and this is so much power on the battlefield here. Julian Wellman in a commanding position. I just I just read Nathan's lip there, and he said, let's go. <laughs> so it seems like it is time to go, and Nathan uh, might just be poised to 2-0 Julian. And it was the flip side yesterday, Ailey. Oh, it much. was a 2-0 in favor of Julian with that sweet Is It Tempo deck taking down Nathan's Grixis midrange deck. Uh-oh. Oh. oh, we need Cat Oven and Mayhem Devil. Yep. Boom. There it is! Yep. Is that enough? It's gotta be. Cat sack, ping, 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 yeah. I wonder if it's enough through that two damage uh, that Julian took, you know, I wouldn't say unnecessarily because it was definitely bluffing mm -hmm. uh, uh, an aspect, but I, I think this was just well and truly oh enough. Oh my goodness. Tapped out, nothing Julian can do. Gonna sacrifice cats, do some dings, and that is gonna be Nathan Stoyer picking up a convincing victory here against Julian Wellman on the Teamer Chance Mogrify. And look at that. Look at the emotion there from Nathan Stoyer. You can see he was sweating there. I have to find out from him. I hope Cedric asks, did you have that in hand the whole time? Were you just yes. waiting for the perfect moment to strike? Or top deck, who knows? Yeah, I think when we, we'll find out. when we saw that wince on his face, I yeah. think that was really the time when he drew that. And normally, you know, Nathan